Um, how many of you by show of hands remember and have been here in the last few months we've been talking about miracles and God doing supernatural things through you? I mean, all you, very good, you, you can't miss it if you've been here. Um, and we're going to continue that today. Uh, we started this, this started for me in September uh, with something that happened that I'll share with you in a few weeks. But it was supernatural and my eyes got opened to a, a realm of the spirit, the Holy Spirit, that has never been opened for me. And I've been on this journey, and in part of that journey, I went to a conference, which is this conference in your, on this card, and our staff has gone, and we've sent three teams. I went once and, and two other conferences to learn about the supernatural and the history of why churches deny the supernatural, because there are denominations that will teach you that miracles don't happen anymore. And it has nothing to do with what the Bible says. It has to do with some other stuff, and they won't admit that. Um, and so I, we went to this conference, and, we, and I wanted to see it. And I saw from my eyes the Spirit of God do what the Bible says. And I had a way, do I want what the Bible says or not? Oh, I always wanted what the Bible says, so that was a no-brainer. Well, this conference is coming to The Rock May 7th to 10th. That's what's on this card. And it's going to be uh, a Wednesday to Saturday. The day sessions, which you have to pay for, it's a lot of teaching, is going to be at our East County campus. And then the night sessions are going to be free, and they're here at The Rock, at Point Loma. And then on Saturday, it'll be here all day Saturday. Um, I want to encourage you, if you can, to come to this conference. If you can come during the day and the night, great. If you can only come at night, great, but come to this conference. Because these guys have been doing this and walking this for decades longer than I have, and we have, and it's going to be an amazing boost uh, in, your, in your heart about what can happen, and you're going to experience the Holy Spirit like you never have. Um, I saw 400 people get, get healed in one day at this conference. It's just unbelievable. And so I just want to encourage you to come, get online and register and bring your friends, and if you, whether the day and or night, but definitely the night ones are free, and just let's fill this place up and see God do something amazing. Amen? Amen. Amen. So that's that card. Amen. Okay, one more time. How many of y'all are saying, Lord, I want everything you have for me, everything you have for me. I want to do whatever you want me to do. Amen. Lord Jesus, we pray that you continue to move in our life and we pray you continue to transform our church and our peoples. Just blow their minds. Reveal yourself to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, let's see your Bibles, church, on three, one, two, three, say word. Very good. Turn to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts. And if it's frustrating because you can't find the places in the Bible we turn to, just learn. <laughs> just learn. Uh, in 1982, I was drafted to the Los Angeles Rams, and in anticipation of coming to Los Angeles, I had only been on a plane once, never been to California. I remember one day in January, I was sitting in the cafeteria at our school at University of New Haven in Connecticut with a girlfriend. She wasn't my girlfriend. She was just a friend of uh, four years. We were seniors, just kind of reminiscing over our four years together. And it was like 19,000 degrees below zero. And we were just sitting there going, man, wouldn't it be nice to be in California? And it was sunshine. And then six months later, I was here. And I had this anticipation this expectation to experience everything California and more, more importantly, the NFL had to offer. You know, California had nice sunshine and, you know, brown people or people trying to get brown lady and get in the tan and palm trees and convertibles and all that kind of stuff. I mean, that was ridiculously incredible. But to go to the NFL and to experience all that the NFL had, you know, the stadiums, the parties, da 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 And I had all this expectation that I was going to get into all of that. And it was so exciting, and I wanted it. 
I wanted all of it, and I expected to experience all of it. I wonder how many of you, when you gave your life to Christ and said, I want to be a Christian and live like Christ, I wonder how much of Christ's life you had an expectation to have. In other words, did you say, I want to do everything Jesus did? Did you have that expectation? Now, when you become a doctor, you have an expectation of doing what doctors do. You were doctoring people, whether it be surgery or giving medicine or just looking in their eyes and their ears and their throat, whatever it is, whatever you got trained in, you have an expectation, I'm going to do that. When you get married, you have an expectation of being a husband, a wife, a spouse, a parent, blah, blah, blah. You have an expectation of experiencing all of that. If you run a business, you have an expectation of running a business. By the way, if you don't run a business, don't think when you run your business that you get to do whatever you want, whenever you want, because that's not what it means. And that's just not reality for if you own a business. Can I get an amen? For all y'all who own a business, you know it's 24-7, and you never get to do what your business does. In other words, if you're a painter and you get a painting business, you're not going to paint. You're going to get to a point where you don't paint anymore. So if you want to paint, don't get a paint business. Just go get a job painting. But that's another thing. But so if you, if you, but if you, if you, if you, if you're a painter, you expect to be a painter. If you're a husband, a spouse, you expect to be a spouse. If you're a plumber, you expect to plumb. If you're a doctor, you expect a doctor. And so when you got became a Christian, did you expect to do everything Jesus did? Now I bet you some of you didn't. You just said, I just want to pray and go to heaven. But that's not what being a Christian means. Christian means little Christ. So when you see Jesus in the Bible doing stuff, you should say, I should expect to do that. He healed the blind. Do you expect to heal the blind? He healed the deaf. Do you have any expectation that he could use you to heal the deaf? He healed the mute. Do you have any expectation he could heal, use you to heal the mute? He healed crippled. They got up and walked. Do you have any expectation that he could possibly use you to do that? He cast out demons. We've had people who had demons possessed, cast out in the last 30 days in our campuses, right here in this room, in our East Camp, right here. Do, do, you have any, do you have any expectation that that would ever happen to you? Because if you don't, then what is a Christian to you? It's like, you know, people go on, you, you join a team, you expect to play. You expect to get a uniform. It's not like you get on the team and say, okay, you made a team, and then they say, oh, go get a uniform. You're like, what, I get one? Yeah, you're going to get one, yeah, and you're going you, you to get on the field. You mean you going to put me in? Uh, is that why you're on the team? And so my, my proposal to you is this, is that Jesus lived his life as a man submitted to God, filled and empowered by the Holy Spirit, and lived as a man empowered by the Holy Spirit to show you and I, for one of many, one of many reasons he did it, to show you and I what's possible. And we're going to look more next week at his humanness, how he humbled himself. He did not consider equality with God a thing to rob, like it's not unrealistic because that's who he was. But he humbled himself and took on the form of a man and lived as a man in, in, in submission to the Holy Spirit and filled and empowered by the Holy Spirit to show you and I what we can do. So in other words, he prayed. He, he, if he was God, well, who's he praying to? Himself? He was a man praying to his father. And we're going to look more at those attributes next week. But today I want to look at his, did he really expect us to do what he did? Because if he did, and he had an expectation that you would do what he did, you should have the same expectation. I'm going to say it again slow for emphasis. And then I'm going to pause so you can marinate. If Jesus had the expectation that you were to live like he lived, then you should have the same expectation. It's not like an odd thing. It should be a normal thing. That he created us in his image so he can live in us. It's like having a glove. A glove is created in the image of the hand. A hand is not created in the image of the glove. You make a glove so the hand can fit in it, and when the hand fits in it, the hand gives it life. The glove has no life without the hand. You put the hand in it, boom. When you, God made us in his image so he can live on us to give us life. And so the life he wants to give us is supernatural. And so, so you have to ask yourself a question, okay, dude, this is heavy, dude. I, was, some, I know some of you were high last night, so I just want you to focus. How many of you know that's true? Say Amen. 
Oh, y'all know, y'all know, just came over the border just now. I got to go to church, I got to go to church. You just came from Mel Frogs. Okay, so listen. <laughs> if God expects to live inside of you to do what he did when he was here on earth, if God expects you to live a supernatural life like he lived, then you should have the same expectation. And if you don't have that expectation, who are you to tell God he's wrong? Now, you can say, well, God, I don't want it. Okay, but you're messed up. That's your fault. And when you live a defeated life and you have no power, you have no one to blame but him, yourself, not God. God wants more for you. Don't let the devil talk you out of that. Don't let the devil tell you, oh, you just, you just be lucky you're alive and just go to church every other week and don't give any money. Just, that's all you got. That's, that's supernatural stuff for them. No, it's for everybody. Now, I, I was talking to a guy once, and he, and he said he didn't believe in miracles. I said, I, I really didn't understand that there were actual denominations that don't believe in miracles. And I said, well, isn't being forgiven by the God of the, who created the universe to come and live in me, isn't that a miracle? Th th I mean, that, you can't just buy that at Nordstrom's. That's, a, that's an act of God. <laughs> Can I get an amen? <laughs> that's an act of God. And so that, that's a miraculous thing right there, that you can go from being a, a cocaine head one day to not another day, which was my case. That's God. And so if God wants more for you, let's not put God in a box. Let's tell God, God, I want it all. I want it all. Can I get amen? amen. Now, people will say to you, and, and I don't know if you've heard this, I've heard this because I've gotten criticized through the series, you just have the signs and wonders. You just need to focus on salvation. I was like, look, if Jesus wants me, to be used for a miracle. Absolutely I want that. If God wants to use you, if God wants to give you a supernatural word of knowledge, if God wants to, you to do what he did in whatever capacity that means. How many of you have ever been talking to somebody or you're hearing a story about somebody and all of a sudden this information comes into your head from you don't know where about that situation and you don't know how you got it. Anybody? You know what the Bible calls that a word of knowledge? And then it, when it happens, you're going to go, oh, it was deja vu. I just thought this yesterday. <laughs> deja vu, what is that? God, and I'm not saying uh, whatever deja vu is. God will just speak to you. He'll just speak to you. Some of you have faith. You just got faith. Some of you like to give. You have a gift of giving. And God, that's just, the, that's just the tip of the iceberg because you haven't nurtured it. There's so much more where that comes from. And so today, I'm going to talk about does God really expect that from you. Next week, we're going to talk about how God was really a man. When I said God was a man, how Jesus lived as a man, how he lived as a man, and all the evidences that he was living as a man to be a model to us. And then we're going to talk about the implications of the supernatural in our life in, in two weeks. So let's look at Acts. Oh, it's on. And by the way, you will get, you, you, if you pursue God, you will be amazed what he gives you. Number one, uh, Jesus, oh, by the way, the lesson plan you have in your thing is for next week. I, I just moved it back a week. <laughs> come on, come on. Verse 22, chapter, chapter 2, verse 22 says, Acts 2, 22. Men of Israel, hear these words. This is Peter talking. Day of Pentecost, he's preaching a sermon. 3,000 people are going to get saved. Verse 22, men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs which God did through him in, the, in your midst, and you yourselves, you know it. Acts 2, 22. You know it. We all know for a fact that a man named Jesus lived, it's a historical fact, and that he did miracles. He healed the blind, he healed the mute, he healed the deaf, he healed the crippled, he raised the dead, he cast out demons, he spoke to the weather. The weather. You know what? I want sunshine today. Bam, it's run sunshine. That's what he did. We all know that. I, I, and so we just want to establish that, and it's all through the Old Te New Testament. You can look at all the miracles he did. Amen? Okay. No question about it. Let me look at my next verse. Turn to uh, Matthew chapter 10. You're in Acts four books before it. Don't go all the way back to Genesis. 
Matthew 10. When I was about 36 years old, I had, I was, we were going to do our first youth crusade, and someone challenged me and said, are you doing everything spiritually to make sure that thing is success? It was our first event. It ended up being a quarter of a million dollars. It, it stressed me out. I almost went to the hospital. It wore me to the bone. And it was an amazing event. We had 19,000 kids at the sports arena right here in San Diego. Uh, 4,000 came forward in those two days. Um, and I had a meeting with a couple. And the man and his wife were in their mid-50s, had just finished a 40-day fast. And I was like, first, I thought they were old. <laughs> I know what goes around comes around, huh? No. <laughs> no, people say to me, I'm old. It's like, I'm not old. But anyway, they were old to me at the time. And he said, oh, yeah, we, we, uh, we did a 40-day fast. And I was like, I thought only Jesus did that. How? And so I went to our team and said, we got to call people to fast. We went on a 40-day fast. We, and we, I fasted 40 days two or three times. I can't remember now. There are things that Jesus did that you may just have wrote off that that's not for you. Don't do that. Tell God I want any, whatever you want. I want every, how many of you, no, just, just random question. How many of you would love to be walking in the mall Low, just stop right there. How many of you like to be walking in the mall? <laughs> hey! <laughs> How many of you would love to be walking in the mall and see someone blind and God say to you, go pray for them, and they get their sight? So let me ask the question. How many of y'all would, would like, that would be like really cool? See someone in a wheelchair at the Padre game and, and then hear God say, I want you to just go pray for them. And they get up. Okay. So the, the, the reason, just, just think way out the box. God, I'm good. What, what do you want to do? Remember the hand in the glove. That hand is powerful. That hand is powerful. So we have to believe it. We got to start and say, okay, God, I'm ready. Now, it, it's going to be a process. And the Bible says to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. What does that mean? It doesn't mean the work to get your salvation. You already had the salvation. You need to exercise it. It's like going to the gym. You can't live for two. When I, I was an All-American in my third year in college. And right after my third year, right after I became an All-American, I ripped my chest muscle. This, this, it was massive. <laughs> <laughs> it took you all a while to get that. What are you doing? <laughs> And what happened was when I was lifting the weights, I was bench pressing, my muscle tore off the bone and it went all the way down to this. And so when I was lifting, I screamed and they thought I was screaming because I was trying hard and they didn't grab the weight. And then it ripped again. It went clack, clack, and I have this big hole right here. So I had to start all over. So, I, so here I'm all American talking about I'm going to the NFL, I'm talking about going to the NFL. And I had to start by, I was in a sling, I had to start by just doing that. And I'm, I'm going into my senior year of college, and I can't even lift my hand. And then they saw with half a pound, one pound, two pounds. And all my friends are bench pressing 300, and I'm with one pound. <laughs> I, can't, I can't even go into the gym. There's nothing in the gym that small. <laughs> I'm at my house. <laughs> And then I remember going in there and, you know, the barbell on the bench is 45 pounds. I couldn't even do 45 pounds. I would have to use the, the smaller weights that were like 30 pounds and bench press. It was, it was humiliating. But I had to work it and work it. Now I'm at the 450, you know, it's just no big deal. <laughs> but so I had to work it out and make it stronger and stronger. Same thing in the spiritual realm. You can't just get saved and say, okay, I'm going to pray for people to get raised from the dead. By the way, God can do that. Sure can. But don't be tripping out when it doesn't happen. You have to practice being faithful because some people can't handle the miracle because you start thinking it's about you and it's not about him. It ain't about you or, you or me. It's about him. Amen. So look what he said. We, we saw he did miracles. Look at chapter 10, verse 5. It says in verse 5, the, uh, Jesus just named his 12 disciples. He said he sent them out. Matthew 10, 5, he sent them out, commanded, saying, go into 
the, the, go, do not go into the way of the Gentiles, do not enter the city of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of Israel as you go preach, saying the kingdom as of heaven is at hand. The title of this sermon is Thy Kingdom Come. Um, the, our Father who art in heaven, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Open heaven and pour out your power on earth. And may the perfection in heaven be existed here. May the health in heaven be here. May the power in heaven be here. May the wisdom in heaven be here. May the peace of God and the glory of God of heaven be here. That's what that prayer means. God, may your heaven be on earth. Not I am just going to be a Christian and, and do what I think is good. I, people tell me all the time, oh, well, here's what I think you should do. Here's what I think. The, what does the Bible say? This is not about what you think. It's not about what I think. So it says, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And then look what he says. To prove it, he says in verse 7, as you go preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Look what he says. Heal the sick. Everyone say heal the sick. Heal the sick. Cleanse lepers. Say cleanse lepers. cleanse lepers. Raise the dead. Say raise the dead. Amen. Cast out demons. Say cast out demons. Amen. Freely you have received, freely you give. Now you might say, well, are you really saying we're supposed to cast out demons? Are you really saying we're supposed to raise the dead? Well, what I'm really saying is that it really happens. Now, whether you're going to do it or not is a whole other story because you have attitude. <laughs> <laughs> there will be very nice Christian people who will tell you that doesn't happen anymore. Well, if you come to the conference, you will see it happen. If you stand down here at the service, you will see it happen. You want to see, you want to go to a third world country and see all kinds of spiritual things? In our country where we have a whole lot of wealth, we are so distracted. In the kingdom of God, it happens all the time. That is not, whether it happens or not is not the mystery. It's whether you believe it. He said, here's what he told him to do. Okay? So we saw Jesus perform miracles. We saw him tell his disciples to do it. Turn to Acts. You're in Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts. Turn to Acts. Chapter 3. Acts chapter 3, verse 1. Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour, and a certain lame man, man lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms or money from those who entered the temple. Uh, how many of you have ever seen a person sitting on the street, crippled, homeless, whatever, asking for money? That's what this is. Simple. Okay? Then it says, verse 4, fixing his eyes on him when Peter... And John look, said, look at us. And so the man gave him the, their his attention, expecting to receive something from them. So he's down there going, oh, alms for the poor, alms for the poor. And they said, look at us. And he looks up, expecting to get some money. And then what happens? It says, Peter said, silver and gold I don't have. Brother, I'm poor like you. <laughs> but what I do have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Do you have the faith to even ask that? The, the scary part is if what if nothing happens? They have lost nothing. You may have your pride bruised, but if it wasn't about you, you don't have any pride. If it's about you, then that's your problem. It's not about you. The more people you pray for, the more chance something's going to happen. And then it says... And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankles received scrumph. Everyone say scrumph. This is strength. God's power is scrumph. That's just the word I made up, but you don't have to. Uh, it's not like a Hebrew, Greek word for strength or nothing like that. It's just ghetto, okay? It's just ghetto. Verse 8, so he leaping and stood up and walked and entered the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. Say praising God. Because it's all about the glory of God. It's all about the glory of God. Now, you may be saying, well, can I do that today? Sure. 
Now, will this happen? I don't know. The more you learn, the more you practice, the more chances it will happen. But there's nothing, there's nothing preventing you from going, hey, can I pray for you to, be, to, to, to walk? Why not? Well, could God do something? He absolutely can. But the more training you have, the more practice you have, the more education you have, the better you're going you're gonna to be at it, and the more proficient you're going to be at it so you can do it right or better. But there's nothing, God can speak to you today. He just wants people who trust him. But if you walk around going, that will never happen to me, I'm never going to consider it, I'm never going to consider it. I, some of you, and I would bet, I, I should say, I bet a lot of you say, I'm never even going to try to get somebody saved because they're probably going to say no. Forget that. I'm never going to invite someone to church because I'm scared I might get rejected. You won't invite people to church. Must us try to pray for a healing. And if that's your situation, you really need to grow out of that. That's like kindergarten faith. Kindergarten. The devil don't even, he don't even have to boo. And you're, ah, ah, ah. I mean, <laughs> turn to, um, turn to John 14. John 14. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts. If you were in Acts, you just had to turn backwards like 10 pages. John 14, look what it says. Moses, Jesus said, 14 verse 12. This is Jesus talking. John 14, 12. Most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me. Uh, Raise your hand if you believe in Jesus. Uh Uh-huh. Okay, put your hands down. Now, what what I mean by believe in him is that not that you believe that he exists in your head, but you have surrendered your life and you believe and you are trusting more and more every day to rely on him solely. Yes. Raise your hand. Yes. Okay, a few less hands. Okay, that's cool. Uh, <laughs> most, of, thank you for being honest. Most assuredly I say to you, if you believe in me, the works that I do, you will do. Oh, snap. Let me read that again. Because <laughs> that can't mean what it says. Certainly Jesus must be talking about something else. The works that I do, you will do, or whoever believes in me, the works I do, he will do, and even greater works than these he will do because I go to my Father. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do because, so that the Father may be glorified. By the way, praying in Jesus' name does not mean saying whatever you please and in Jesus' name, and that means it has to happen. In other words... Yo, girl, God, I want that girl and my wife in Jesus' name, hook me up. <laughs> That's not what Jesus' name means. And then you like an idiot go, yo, girl, I've been praying in Jesus' name that you will be my woman. So uh, get rid of that dude and that God told me that you're mine. No. <laughs> praying in Jesus' name means I pray in Jesus' name, Lord, I want that woman or whatever, that car, that house, that job. In Jesus' name means I want it if you want me to have it. If it's your will that I have it. You do not want what God doesn't want for you. Oh, you don't. How many of of y'all dated the wrong person before? Oh, my goodness, I rest my case. Uh, (laughs) I have no more questions for the the defendant, Your Honor. Oh, girl, he, you should see him. Oh, my goodness, he is so fine. He is so fine. He got those white teeth. Oh, my goodness, he's straight. He got that good hair. He's so fine. And then six months later, you want to shoot the brother. Because <laughs> he was the wrong dude. So when you say, I want to date him, her, I want that car, that house, in Jesus' name, it means, Lord, I only want it if you want it. So I'm going to pray for this person to be healed in Jesus' name. So whatever you decide to do is good with me. Because it ain't about me. That's what that means. But you want to pray before you pray if you should pray. <laughs> what does that mean? Lord, before I go over here and pray for that person, I'm praying to you now, should I go over there and pray for that person? And he may say, no. Good. Good. Okay. Okay. Yes, but I don't want you to pray to get healed. I want you to pray that they would just listen to my voice. Everything is a step of obedience. About love. I love God. Love God means obey God. Amen. So God says you're going to do, I did miracles. I told my disciples to do miracles. And I told you, you are going to do more than I did. So here's the million dollar question. 
You don't have to answer it, just think. Pensar, think. Is it true? Do you believe that? Do you believe him? You will have people telling you don't believe it. You will have voices in your head telling you don't believe it. You have to decide on your own, do I believe what the Bible says? Do I believe what I see happening in other people's lives where people are actually doing what the Bible says? So why shouldn't I believe it? It's happening right in front of me. So in a minute we're going to pray, and you're going to have an opportunity to say, Lord, I want to surrender all my doubt. I want to surrender myself, and I have this expectation that if I give myself to you fully, you're going to, one, forgive me of my sins. Some of you need to be forgiven. Number two, some of you are going to be empowered. Some of you are going to get clear vision. The scales are going to come off your eyes, and you're going to see the spirit world like you've never seen before. And God's going to do an amazing thing in your life. But you come with an expectation, God, I want it all. I don't want to go through the motions anymore. I want it. And, 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 and I'm going to look for it. When I met my wife, I tried to get her phone number the day I met her, and she said, no. We were at a party, we were dancing at the end of the party. I said, can I have your number because I want to see you again. And she said, no. I'm like, why not? <clears throat> How am I going to see you? How am I going to see you again with my words verbatim? She said, her words verbatim, figure it out. No, you did not. <laughs> I mean, we were, whoa, we were dancing on the, you know, shaking that thing, like, hey, hey, and we were like right here, like this, right? And I was like, what? You're going to give me your number, what? <laughs> <laughs> so I said, I, I said, I'm going to find you. She said, okay, we'll see, you know, I mean, whatever. Three days I found her. I went to the registrar at the school and I found out where her class was and I said, okay, now what? What's your next challenge? Because I ain't going anywhere. Uh, <laughs> do you want God? You go get him. Now, I'm not saying he's hiding from you. He's right here. But sometimes we're just sitting around waiting for stuff to happen and we're not, we're not knocking on the door. He says, if you knock, I will answer. He didn't say knock once. You got to knock and knock and knock. And not, and not, and not, and not. Now, you may say, well, why, why is he taking so long? Oh, because you're not ready for what that door is going to have behind it. <laughs> and, and <laughs> hey, you ain't ready. If I open this door, <laughs> you sure you are? So I'm going to open the little door. I'm going to open the, the Mr. Ed door, the horse door. He's just going to give you half. <laughs> well, over. here you go. You can take that. But you don't want me to open this whole thing until you're ready. So I'm going to prepare you as you knock. The Bible says call and he will answer. Keep calling. Paul said, I press on that I may apprehend what Christ has apprehended from me. I'm not looking back. I'm going forward. I'm pressing. I'm pressing. I'm pressing. I'm pressing. So the question is, are you willing to press? There was an experiment done with rats, lab rats. They put the lab rats in the water to see how long they could swim before they drowned. Two minutes, they drowned it. <laughs> then he took the same kind of rats and did another test. Obviously not the rats who just died because they're dead. <laughs> they took other rats and put them in and had them swim for one minute. And before they drowned, they took them out, let them rest, and they put them back in the water to see how long they would swim after they took them out for rest. 22 hours. Why? Because the rats that were taken out of the water had an expectation that someone was going to come get them. It's called hope. Hope is an expectant desire. He's going to come. So we're going to pray, and I want you to pray with hope that God can actually change your life and use you and take you to another level and give you that more that your heart is searching for because you are searching for more that gnawing at you. When I went on a sabbatical last year, uh, June 1, for three months, 13 weeks, church was what it is, you know, da 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 and everything was going great. But I, I, there was something more. I said, God, God was gnawing at me, saying there's something more. I said, okay, God, I got to get away and get out of the daily rat race and just focus. There's more. So right now I'm going to ask all of you and all your campuses, all the microsites, to bow your heads, close your eyes. And I want you to think 
Do you have an expectation, a desire for all that God has for you? Are you even willing to say, God, I want to see, would you use me for something supernatural? Could you use me? Or is that just for other people? It's for whoever believes. You just read it. You just read Jesus' words. Lord Jesus, I pray for all the campuses. I pray for everybody listening in microsites, online, wherever they are. Holy Spirit, I pray you speak. I pray you nudge people's hearts right now in Jesus' name. Speed up their heart. Have it skip out of excitement, out of the expectation that they're going to surrender to you. Holy Spirit, stir people's hearts even now. Give them a sense of expectation that something's going to happen in their life now. Start shaking the hyper people's leg, <laughs> their arm. I pray you even start to heal people who came here with disease and sickness or pain in their leg or their ankle, that you would heal them even now. If you came here with a leg problem, an ankle problem, move that leg and see if it's been healed. But right now I pray, Lord, that you would stir people's hearts and that you would prepare them for what you want to do in their life. If you are saying, Lord, I, I'm ready, I want it all, whether you want to get saved for the first time and you want everything God has for you, or you just want it all. You want more of God and you're willing to pursue God with the expectation that you're going to get more than you ever had from God. So eyes closed, heads bowed. And by the way, before we, eyes closed, heads bowed, before I do pray that prayer, if anybody in here felt their leg get better just now or anything in their body get better, just raise your hand. I want to see you if you felt that. Anybody? God bless you. Very good. God bless you. 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 All those people. God bless you for that healing. God bless you. Lord, <laughs> what was that? <laughs> Lord, thank you. If you're saying, Lord, I, I want to I be used to the fullest extent that you created me, I want you to pray this prayer with me. In the privacy of your heart, say, dear God, I surrender my life. Jesus, fill me with the Spirit of God. Cleanse my sin. Empower me with every bit of your power. I surrender my life to you. I want to do it your way. I want you to use me. I have an expectation to walk and live just like you. Thank you, God. As our eyes are closed and our heads are bowed, in a minute I'm going to ask you to stand up if you prayed that prayer for whatever reason. You may be saying, I just want to be empowered with the Spirit of God. If that's the reason, then you stand for that reason. But if you're saying, yes, Lord, I want you to, I, you just pray that prayer, no matter if, whatever reason you pray that prayer, if you're in a microsite, in a, in a gymnasium, in an alley, in a garage, in a, in a uh, uh, laundromat, wherever you are, if you're any of our campuses, and you pray that prayer right now, I want you to stand to your feet and acknowledge your faith in God and your expectation that he's going to do something in your life. God bless you. Stand to your feet. Stay standing. God bless you. 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 Very good. God bless you. 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 Stay standing. Very good. God bless you. Stay standing. God bless you. Stay standing. God bless you. 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 Very good. God bless you. God bless you. Anyway, anybody else? Stand to your feet. God bless you. 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 Now here's what we're going to do in a minute. We're going to ask all of you who are standing. In a minute, we're going to ask you to come down to the altar. If you're in the balcony, all you got to do is turn around and walk up and the ushers will bring you down. And the rest of us, what we're going to do is we're going to cheer for them. 
So if you're standing up, come out of your seat, come on down to the altar, and let's give them a hand there. Come on down. God bless you. God bless you. Stay right there. God bless you, sir. God bless you. 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 God bless you, brother. God bless you. 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 Amen. 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 God bless you. 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 Amen. Amen. A uh, couple things. If you felt your leg get healed, like we prayed, there were about seven of eight of you who said that you felt your leg get better. If you can tell after service, tell one of the pastoral support teams so we can get in contact, you want to know what happened. Amen. Because that encourages us to know people get healed. Amen. Um, for all of you, God is ready for you. He's ready for you. Amen. Let's give all these people a hand. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. <laughs> How you doing, sir? God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. <laughs> God bless you. 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 I want to challenge all of you to ask yourself what you believe and what you're willing to allow God to do in your life. And if you pay attention, you're going to hear him talk to you. You're going to hear voices in your head saying, go pray for that person. Go do this. Go do this. Go do this. And you're going to have the struggle. Well, is that God? Is it me? Is it God? Is it me? Uh, don't rack your brain too much on it. Just do it. <laughs> if it's biblical, do it. And just pay attention to what happens and you'll start to learn what it means to walk with God. Because I have to do the same thing. God has opportunities for me all the time. I'm like, God, do you want me to do it? Do you want me not? And that's what, that's the relationship. That's what it's like. As humans, we like, listen very closely. As humans, we want to be in control. So we want to do what's comfortable and familiar. Everyone say familiar. You will do what's familiar even if it hurts you because you're so used to the familiar. And I would bet you every person in this room has some self-destructive habit that you do over and over again because it's familiar and you know it and it's predictable and you feel like you can control it in the sense of, okay, I, I'm going to go out with that guy even though he's not good for me, but at least I'm familiar with it. Lord, I'm ready to walk by faith. And walking by faith with God is walking into the unknown all the time. I've been a saved for 30 years. Actually, April 12th was my spiritual birthday, 30 years, and I'm still walking into the unknown. Amen. And, and once God gets me comfortable with a certain level of unknown, then he says, now you're going to go to another level of unknownness. And I told you a couple weeks ago that I have this opportunity that is blowing my mind and it's scary. It is completely unknown. But he's like, let's go. And I'm like, okay. Same thing. I got, I'm dealing with that right now. Now, one day I'll tell you about it. I can't tell you now, but I'll tell you right now. It is, it, it's unknown. So that's what walk with God is. You never get to a point, I got it. I figured it out. Forget that. So if you just say, Lord, I'm ready to do whatever you want me to do. I'm going to do what you want me to do. Your life will change every day. You will see amazing things in your happen every day. Every day. Every day. 
Lord, I pray for these people, and I pray you bless them, and I pray they trust you, and I pray you do something supernatural in their life. Lord, thank you for your faithfulness and your goodness. In Jesus' name, amen. Before y'all move, what we're going to do is we're going to cheer for them until they get into that room in the back, and then after that, we will dismiss you. We appreciate you not leaving until after we get them in that room, and then we'll pray for you at the end. Amen? But now, let's cheer them in the room. Let's give them a hand.